Hi there. Since attending an online conference of the Golden Rosy Cross, I've decided I'm not going to do things anymore. I'm not even going to do prayer. Um, I'm not going to do ritual. Uh, I'm not going to work with symbols and mantras and vibrations and not even with too much esoteric imagery for that matter. Uh, although I suppose I'm creating unconscious imagery now, uh, which I just throw away at the end of the video presentation, but it, it's left up on the server, obviously. I'm not going to do, I'm just going to be, because I think being is, is, is what it's basically all about. Uh, what I mean by that, is going into oneself and looking for insight. Insight was very much the word uh, that uh, our little online study group uh, was considering last night. Um, insight, it, it, you know, there's no techniques really that can help you <laughs> get insight. It, it's not that you can get it through techniques. You either get insight or you don't. Um, you either you either receive gnosis or you don't receive gnosis. Um, but what you don't receive can actually be of similar value to what you do receive, uh, which is which is in itself an insight. Um, and somehow that's related to the idea about uh, about the edge about suffering. Um, I think that in terms of spiritual growth, I think it's far worse uh, to be sipping $100 cocktails in a bar in Los Angeles, uh, having just won the, the Oscar for best film score. It's far worse to be in that situation uh, than it is to be in a situation of, of relative failure. Um, um, <laughs> that's a loaded thing because what do you mean by failure? I mean, if you've written any music, for example, is that failure? Um, it hasn't won an Oscar. Uh, you haven't even uploaded it to SoundCloud or something like that, but you've written this piece of music. Uh, or maybe you have uploaded it to SoundCloud and only two people have ever, ever listened to it. Um, but it, but, but it, it, is that failure? I say relative, okay, in, in comparison to winning an Oscar. Uh, but maybe it, comparisons are not a good idea. Uh, and maybe it, it's so relative that it doesn't make any sense, actually, to say success and failure. Um, so I have to put sort of quotation marks around success and failure. Um, but perhaps, uh, you know, you think that you have failed, okay, and this makes you depressed. Um, whether or not that belief is actually valid or not, uh, you have these feelings of failure. Uh, whereas the guy who's just won the, the Oscar and is sipping the, sipping the cocktails uh, has a feeling of relative success. And, you know, is feeling like, good job done, lads, like, you know what I mean? Um, and uh, although they may be saying I could have done better on bar 57 and bar 60 but I, I just let it go and I've still won the Oscar uh, or they could be aware that you know winning an Oscar for best film uh, competition isn't exactly an amazing achievement really given the fact that you know unless it's a really really great film a great arty film a great film about spiritual matters that you you you've augmented through your music uh you know just creating a, a sound a film score uh you know even if it has won an oscar uh isn't that great a success compared to i don't know mozart's magic flute or something which is obviously a classic piece of music that uh that has won plaudits all down through the centuries um whereas your music might be forgotten uh, in a couple of years' time. Uh, Mozart mu Mozart's music is never forgotten. Um, so, you know, you, you could think, well, uh, one day I wish I could write something like The Magic Flute. 
Um, and uh, so even the person sipping the cocktails, you know, in the expensive bar, uh, might be inwardly sort of still not satisfied with their lives, um, even though they might actually enjoy a lot of money from royalties, and they, which they will do. Uh, there's no doubt about that, uh, that financially they're going to be pretty stable and be able to invest in new sample libraries and new equipment for the studio and things like that. So, you know, they, there's kind of like, it, it's all mixed anyway, isn't it, really? But uh, in terms of, of spiritual awareness, to be successful, in quotation marks, might be worse than being unsuccessful, in quotation marks. Um, and it might be that, that in fact, suffering a certain amount of suffering, uh, anxiety, grief, uh, fear, um, uh, a certain experience of scarcity, a certain experience of dissatisfaction, etc. Uh, these might be the very things that you need uh, to turn your attention inwards uh, and to seek spiritual insight and to develop your spiritual um, sense or intuition um, uh, naturally. Uh, and just allow it to happen. And it could even be that, you're, that the suffering propels you uh, in a spiritual right direction, uh, which in fact is the testimony of, of a great many people throughout history, in fact, uh, that without the suffering, uh, they wouldn't have bothered. Uh, and because they are suffering, uh, they did bother. Uh, and you are shown the truth uh, of that the soul is not meant to be here not meant to be around here, it's meant to be somewhere else. And that truth only comes to you uh, because you see the prison actually as it is, uh, and not as a gilded cage, or perhaps not as a prison at all. And if you're very successful and very rich, you won't ever see the prison bars that actually are there. Uh, you'll think that you're free, and that you, you're in control of your destiny, and everything's, everything's wonderful. Uh, when in fact it isn't wonderful for the person who's a multi-millionaire and it just as it's not wonderful for the person you know uh, living uh, living in poverty uh, it's neither it's not wonderful for either parties uh, but the person living in po poverty might actually come to that conclusion uh, far 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 sooner uh, than the person living in their millions um, so but obviously they're, they're extremes because somebody, some people who actually are very rich uh, do actually end up uh, getting rather bored with life. And, and from that relative boredom, they do actually begin to wonder what else is there out there. Uh, and they, you know, I'm thinking of people like Tom Cruise, I suppose, um, you know, who, who are obviously are multi-millionaires, but, uh, uh, but he's interested in spiritual matters as well, uh, in as far as he can be uh, and other people are also um, what do you mean by that says somebody uh, I, I don't think I'm going to say any more than that actually on that um, but anyway um, so some people who are very rich are also going to suddenly realize that the soul is imprisoned um, whereas some people that are very poor and are suffering greatly uh, with depression uh, might actually still not realize uh, any any spiritual um, any spiritual element is is within their grasp at all either. So so the, the, the you know some people on the extreme end of, of riches uh, maybe still be led to spiritual life, and some people on the extreme end of poverty uh, may not be they not see anything spiritual in it at all. Um, so you know as I say, so psychologically, if you're very 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 depressed. Uh, you might um, not see, not hear the call from within you. And if you're very, very, very content, you might not hear the call within you either. Um, so, you know, it, it's a sort of, I suppose, a mixture. I mean, if life is a mixture of, of sukha and dukkha, um, to put in Buddhist terms, uh, pleasure and suffering, if it's a mixture of that, which it is in in just about everybody's case, really. Um, yet still, uh, probably find that the, that the suffering is really what does pr finally propel you um, uh, along the spiritual path, wh whereas the, the pleasure uh, does not. And it could be that, you know, 
for example, you you follow a, a follow a spiritual path, and, and you're having lots of fun uh, following that path, uh, but you're still not getting it. Uh, whereas, in fact, a relative failure uh, along the path or an abandonment of the path altogether, uh, and therefore suffering because of that, um, actually leads you to to have new insights, uh, whereas you didn't get those insights before when you were following a spiritual path, in quotation marks. So obviously the whole situation is fairly complex, actually, um, and you can't really uh, live in a black and white universe and say this is so and this is not so. Um, I think there are nuances uh, of circumstances uh, for every individual uh, that are either going to militate against you having spiritual insight or actually uh, very much encourage you to have uh, special insights. Uh, but this is anyway, this is my insight uh, as a result of, of being rather than doing. But I do think that as far as my own life is concerned, uh, you know, I do need antidepressants um, in my life because uh, because before that I was I was in such a state um, that I wasn't receiving getting any insights at all, no matter how much I did the spiritual exercises, because it was just everything I did was just knocked down again. Um, so within the param with with so I feel better uh, within myself. Um, but there is still suffering and depression there. Uh, it hasn't gone away. It's just my brain is now better able to cope with the, with the pain and the suffering of my life. Um, so within that, uh, within that new paradigm, as it were, of, of being able to cope with the suffering, um, I can still look at the suffering and still think that perhaps in many ways I'm better off uh, with the suffering that I have uh, than somebody who is very content with life. Um, and that's it. that is, uh, brings its own sense of comfort, in actual fact, um, uh, which it didn't before, because it couldn't before, because I was in such a state. But now I'm in less of a state, uh, it, that this realisation brings me a certain amount of comfort um, in the fact that this uh, suffering is part of what uh, opens my eyes uh, inwardly, um, as well as ex externally, uh, to what's really going on in the world and to what's really going on within myself. Um, and so um, I suppose that being said, um, it's hard to recommend a, a conscious path of suffering. I mean, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go around sabotaging your life uh, in order to create conditions of suffering, in order to create conditions of, uh, that, that would pertain to receiving insight. I don't, I don't think it would work. I wouldn't recommend doing that. You know, all, all this is, is like, is, is observing what has already happened within you. Uh, I don't you think you can consciously create all these things um, uh, without, without perhaps doing more harm than good, actually. Um, you know, so I wouldn't go looking for trouble if I were you. Um, I, I know I, and I wouldn't go looking for a, a, a lack of trouble um, either. So perhaps I wouldn't go looking for, you know, for, for luxury. Um, and I wouldn't go looking uh, for poverty, as it were, either. Um, so perhaps, you know, that even the person in the desert with a sackcloth, sackcloth and ashes, um, they have their own problems, uh, and they may have a great deal of resistance uh, to, to spiritual development within themselves, even though they appear to be in, in, in optimum conditions of non-distraction. Uh, and many, many people say actually being in the desert and living in a cave, uh, in, many, in many instances, it, you know, it's actually worse. I mean, the, 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 the distraction, mental distractions come into you. Uh, and the isolation is pretty horrific uh, to cope with. Um, and in fact, uh, you know, the ascetic uh, may appear not to have any distractions because they are an ascetic, uh, but the asceticism itself can be a distraction. In fact, many ascetics have actually left the ascetic life and gone back into the world uh, because they couldn't cope with the isolation. 
because they found that the isolation was a massive spiritual block in actual fact which they couldn't overcome and then when they went uh, started um, they joined a monastic order that was caring for the sick and, and injured and ill uh, and poor uh, they actually got better spiritual insights as a result of that uh, particular change I can't think of any examples maybe you can I, I think there have there are examples in religious history of that actually happening uh, the people go back in the world have found that things blockages actually unblocked themselves um, that their fanaticism in going into the desert uh, was in set was itself a block to religious progress uh, but I think that progress there has to be um, and I agree with Stefan Heuler uh, that uh, in his in his lecture on dreams uh, that that spiritual progress there has to be you you can't um, you can't tread water uh, like a fish. You've got to keep going forward, or you'll drown. Um, so it, it could be that, in general, um, too much pleasure um, actually makes you drown quicker than 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 uh, than too much um, suffering. But on the other hand, uh, if you have too much suffering, uh, this could certainly overwhelm you uh, and make you tread water and make you drown just as fast as a person uh, that is content uh, drowns. Um, so, um, as I said, I, I I sort of, I create this video presentation and I have this insight and, and then I recognise that if this insight itself uh, needs to evolve further um, in order to to go deeper than 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 that my presentation would even would suggest now, um, so uh, this is my um, Gnostic vlog for confessio uh, confession uh, for this week.